Hello, sports fans, and welcome to another edition of Scott Sports 101. I'm Scott Trella. Uh, we'll talk uh, uh, Tribe and Major League Baseball, and we'll talk about training deadline. We'll talk Browns and NFL football and training camp. Uh, but first, here is today's Scott Sports 101 trivia question. Who was the first baseball player to appear on a Wheaties cereal box? I will have the answer later in the broadcast. Uh, before we get started, I want to mention that uh, <clears throat> uh, the Lake County Captains, which is an Indians double-A minor league ball team, beat uh, the Great Lakes uh, baseball team last night at Classic Park in Willie, Ohio, uh, one to nothing. Uh, their one run the captains scored came in the fifth, and that's all they needed because they, their bullpen came on and just really finished the job. So... And the reason why I wanted to mention that is because Notoriety Show Choir, which is the show choir that I am with, was at the game last night. And we also, we sang the national anthem before the start of the game. And during the seventh inning stretch, Notoriety Show Choir sang, God bless America, and of course, take me out to the ball game. We thoroughly enjoyed that. We had a great time. And I want to say a special thanks to the to the owner and the staff of the Lake County Captains and say thank you so much for having us and letting us sing for the fans. And we hope to do it again next year in 2019. All right, the Tribe and Twins were tied up at four at the end of the eighth going into the uh, top of the ninth in, in this ball game at Target Field in Minneapolis. But the Tribe unfortunately lost to the Minnesota Twins uh, five to four tonight. Uh, Shane Bieber was on the on the mound for the good guys and went six and one innings and gave up three runs on six hits. Then things got a little interesting when the bullpen things got turned over to the bullpen. Excuse me, and things got a little interesting and a little lopsided as the ball game was still tied at four and Cody Allen had come out in relief for the Tribe and gave up the go ahead run in the at the uh, top of the ninth, and the tri- tribe just was not able to battle back in the bottom of the ninth. And I was, we were, I know we were all hoping the tribe would uh, pull out a victory tonight, but hopefully they can regroup and win tomorrow night. Uh, we all know that the tribe is nine games ahead of Minnesota in the AL Central, and the Indians need to do something before the uh, trade deadline tomorrow afternoon. And the rumor has it that the tribe is pushing to get Washington Nationals left outfielder Bryce Harper. And the trade seems highly unlikely. There is no momentum towards a a deal uh, yet, but the Tribe is focused on adding an outfielder, especially in center field, prior to the trade deadline uh, tomorrow afternoon. Sources at ESPN say that the Indians may be better off adding an infielder and shifting Jason Kipnis to center field, where he had played late last season and in the postseason as well. And that, and as we know, the Tribe did lose to the Twins 5-4, to four, as I just indicated a, uh, just a few seconds ago. Um, and I do feel that the Indians, the Indians may be better off in, in uh, adding an uh, and adding a infielder instead of a uh, left center fielder and moving Kipnis to center field. And I think because the, the trade for Harper is highly unlikely, but they do need to do something before the trade line deadline tomorrow afternoon, and hopefully the tribe will. Frank and I will hopefully do something, and hopefully the tribe staff will. But I do feel they need to have somebody in center field, whether they add a left fielder or add a center fielder or move Kipnis to center field. I think moving Kipnis, center, Kipnis to center field might be a good move, might be a good thing. We'll keep you posted on it, and we'll see what the tribe does on the trading deadline uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, The Browns wrapped up day five of training camp in Berea. Browns head coach Hugh Jackson said, We saw some things that were good and some things that we have to continue to work through. The Browns signed three new players today. Uh, Defensive back Christian uh, uh, Bout. Uh, Tight end Carson Charles and uh, defensive back Jeremiah McKinnon. Uh, The Browns get their first 
uh, day off from training camp tomorrow, and they need to, to, they have to be smart on how to use this day off. And the Browns will return from practice on Wednesday, August 1st, from 3 to 5.55 p.m. in Berea. And the first preseason game, as you know, is Thursday, August 9th, against the New York Giants at MetLife Field in New York City. And Jackson knows that Tyrod Taylor is uncontested, the Browns' starting QB for the upcoming season. Now, uh, I mean, Tyrod Taylor is having a phenomenal training camp so far. He's throwing some great passes. Uh, um, uh, Manioc caught a uh, uh, Daniel Manioc ca- uh, caught a deflected pass from Tyler. He almost caught it, but deflected and it was fell incomplete. Miles Garrett really caught some great passes from Tyrod Taylor, and Austin Corbett really got really had some good hits. And hopefully on Wednesday the Browns will continue to really do uh, do really good in practice and. Hugh Jackson likes what he has seen so far, and I really think this training camp and preseason is going to tell it all. And and the season is here, and before you know it, we're going to be talking uh, regular season football here. So, and and don't forget, I mentioned this again. I'm going to mention this again um, that when the football season, the regular season starts, I will be declaring Sundays. Scott Sports 101 NFL Football Sunday. And I'll talk uh, Browns football and all around the NFL. And I'll do analysis and previews for uh, the early and late games and the Sunday night game and also the Monday night game. And I'll uh, also have uh, various guests on from time to time. And opening day, my guest will, I will be doing it from my friend Matt Murphy's house, which is uh, from the Murphy house, actually, excuse me, which is, the homes of my friends Matt and Katie Murphy, and my guest will be, will be my really good friend, who's one of my best friends, of course, Matt Murphy. So stay tuned for that, and uh, we'll be talking NFL football, and we'll get you ready for the Browns game and all the NFL games. So uh, put, uh, stay tuned for that, and uh, look for that on Sunday, September 9th. That's when it will begin. And uh, I want to talk about, uh, I really want to discuss that uh, I really feel that this training camp is by far one of the Browns' best training camps in years, because they're really focused on stuff, and they really, they're really they focused on winning. They want to win games, and I I would like to see the Browns go 6-10, and 10. and I know that's asking a lot, but I really think it might just might happen, but I know Jarvis Landry is really uh Fill out the Browns to play our play, but I don't think that's going to happen. We haven't done that since so too, and I'm going to believe it when I see it. It's going to be at least a couple of years yet. But Jarvis Landry is really uh, having a good camp as well, and and I know the and uh, Austin Corbett, who was filling in for Josh Gordon, actually is also having a good camp as well, and I indicated that just a few minutes ago. Uh, we'll get back to talking Browns training camp in, uh, in just a sec. And more of Major League Baseball if we have time. Uh, but first, it's time now for the answer to today's Scott Sports 101 trivia question. Who was the first uh, Major League Baseball player to appear on a Wheaties cereal box? If you said Lou Gehrig, you are correct. In 1934, Lou Gehrig not only won the Triple Crown batting title, but was the first Major League Baseball player to appear on a Wheaties cereal box. He appeared on the back of the box, not the front. I'll have another trivia question on my next broadcast, so stay tuned for that. Now, I want to talk about the other teams uh, in the Central Division, in the AFC Central Division, which is the AFC North, which is Pittsburgh, uh, Cincinnati, and Baltimore. Now, Pittsburgh has uh, got some new players, and uh, Roethlisberger, I know, is, is and, and some new QBs as well. And uh, with the with Roethlisberger now not going to be with uh, and also they they also have a new head coach as well. Pittsburgh got a new coach, and I really feel you get Pittsburgh sometimes, and they're going to win some games, and I think they're going to be back in the playoffs, and I, I really think they are. 
Um, Cincinnati, they got some good uh, picks in the draft, and uh, and I feel uh, the uh, picks that they got, and I feel they're really gonna uh, come out, and I think they're gonna they'll have their ups and downs, and I really I am picking the Bengals to go nine and seven. And I think uh, I, they could have been a good night here, but I really feel that the uh, Bengals can really do well, and that they could possibly make the playoffs as well. Now, Baltimore, the Ravens, if uh, they want to make the playoffs, they got to really uh, tighten up. They really got to, they got to, with the picks they got, uh, including uh, um, Lamar Jackson, and uh, and they've got to really. Um, They've got to come out and really play hard. They've got to, the defense really needs to come out and the offense does. And they've really got to tighten up on their de- offensive defense and not give the opposing quarterback so much room. I really am not sure if Baltimore will make the playoffs. They, they might. If they do, I feel they will get in as a wild card. That is my prediction. Now, with the Browns, it's going to be a, a couple of years there, but they're having a spectacular training camp, especially uh, Browns. Uh, Uncontested starting quarterback Tyrod Taylor for the upcoming season. And I still feel if Miles Garrett can stay healthy, he could have a breakout year. And it very well could be, and I really hope that uh he does. And I really uh and I really feel Brown's merchandise and especially T shirts, players t shirts are really gonna sell big. And and I wanna know what you think about this training camp and what do you think the Browns are going to do this upcoming season? Uh, post something on my discussion page uh, on my YouTube channel, Scott Sports 101, or go to my email address, scottsports101 at gmail.com. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know your input. I really want to know what you think the Browns are going to do and what the other teams in the AFC North, the Central Division, the AFC North, are going to do for this upcoming season. Uh, well... We're almost out of time, and before we go, I want to, um, getting back to the tribe and the trading deadline, I feel, I still feel that that they might, that the trade for Bryce Harper is not likely to happen. And I just feel they might want to, they're going to be better off adding an infielder in, instead of a outfielder, and or possibly moving Kipnis to second base. And I think... I think a lot of fans are going to agree with me on that, and a lot of the media is going to agree with me on that. And I just I feel that's just uh, the better way for them to go. But we will see what happens when the trading deadline happens. Uh, get, goes into effect tomorrow afternoon. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of Scott Sports 101. Always remember, be a team player each and every day in every way possible. So long, everybody. Three, two, one. I'm done.